Alright, so the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to create a multi-row schedule in Revit. In this case, a equipment and schedule, although I think this would be applicable to other kinds of complex objects that really kind of merit um, a multi-row schedule like you see here in this acoustical performance schedule. So you have a single HU and you want then to have several rows um, that uh, refer to that HU. It's hard to do in Revit, but it's it's doable. It just you just need to uh, basically use some nested families and uh, shared parameters and family parameters in a certain way. So let's go ahead and show how that's done. So as you can see here, I have a um, basic family. This is going to be my AHU RFA family. I'm going to load it into this project here in a moment. Uh, right now it's just a box and we're going to keep it simple that way the the teaching points come through. So the first step would be to create the shared parameters that you basically want inside of that schedule. So just kind of going back to our schedule here, this is a PDF of what we're after. So you have basically these columns and so you want to create essentially a shared parameter for each of the columns. The mark column of course is a common column in Revit. You might not need that, but you probably need something equivalent to that, kind of like a tie-in column to basically tie in the host family and then the subcomponent families that are or the nested families that are going to be part of that host family. Things will become more clear in a moment, but first things first, create a, a shared parameter for each of basically your column items that you're going to want. So what I'll do first here is I'm going to go into the shared parameters uh, dialog here and I'm going to create a new group and we'll just call this AHU params just to call it something and then I'm going to create new parameters associated with this group um, and we're not going to create all those that were in that schedule we're just going to create uh, like three examples so I'll go click on new and we're going to create a, an example parameter called 63, yes, and 63 hertz. It's going to be an integer parameter because those are the values that we're, you know, ending up with with the, the decibels there. So uh, leave it at that. And then uh, I think everything else can stay the same. If you want to add a tooltip as per Revit 2015, you can. Uh, it's up to you. I'll go ahead and create that parameter. We'll create another one called 125. It will also be an integer. I'll click OK and then we'll create one more called 250 and it will be an integer as well and click OK. All right now one more shared parameter I want to create before I move on is kind of the tie-in parameter the idea being that we'll want uh, any of the subcomponent families that will load later with this HU kind of be all tied together so it'll work in the schedule so again I'll click on the new parameters button I'm going to just call this uh, simply AHU it'll be a text parameter and I'll click OK. So I've got my four shared parameters. Obviously I would normally create more, but that'll be good for now to demonstrate how this works. Click OK to close the dialog. Now it's time to go ahead and create the subcomponent or the nested family. And I'll just go to the Revit application menu here, go New, Family, and obviously we want it to be the of the same category as the host family here. So I'm going to select Mechanical Equipment, click Open, with the template and we'll just create a small extrusion. The idea of this family is not that the geometry is particularly important. Uh, it's essentially a carrier for the shared parameter. So I'll go ahead and finish the extrusion. Again, I want this to be kind of as small and unassuming as possible, so I'll make it one inch deep. And then once I've got this extrusion created, uh, once I've got it created, I'll add the desired shared parameters. So to do so, I will go to the Family Types dialog, and I'll click on the Add button here, and we'll add the shared parameter. And in each of these cases, in with this particular family, they're going to be instance parameters because uh, each instance of the HU, as we move it, you know, it's fairly complex equipment. Each of the pieces of equipment can have different values for each of these fields. So uh, that's why I'm going to make them instance parameters. So 63, we'll add that in here. And uh, let's just leave it under other for the sake of time speed. So there we go. There's one. Let's go ahead and add another. Make sure it's an instance parameter, shared parameter. Select 125. And again, we'll group it under other. And then we'll add 
250. Group it under other, and I want to make sure that they're instant. Sometimes I forget to do that. And then finally, we'll add the tie-in parameter here, the AHU, and it will also be an instance parameter and we'll we'll just have it group under text and if you have Revit 2015 uh, you can then move these up I like to have these in the uh, in a descending order and so I've got now my shared parameters in the uh, in the component or subcomponent family I'll click OK now the last thing we'll want to do with this family is we'll want to make sure that the uh, shared per, uh, family parameter is turned on. This is important as this will allow the project to be able to uh, to basically port values back to the shared parameters for this uh, particular object and then of course we need to save it. So we're going to call this in this case and let's just pull up our little PDF here. If I can bring it up. There we go. There's the PDF and we want this to be unit discharge DB. That's what we're going to call the family. So unit discharge db and save it. Now we have similar families that are going to be using essentially the same shared parameters but they're going to be different you know for we'll have unit return and re-adiated so we'll just use we'll just do a save as here and do unit return again we're not going to do all three just because of the sake of time but what I'll do here is I'll save as this family since it already has the shared parameters and everything in there already no sense of reinventing the wheel and we'll call it unit return DB save it okay and then we're going to load this into the family so it's a sub component into the family let me open up since I saved as and open up unit discharge as well do the same thing load that into the AHU RFA and so we've basically got these two little subcomponent families uh, in our master family or host family now. One thing to keep in mind with the visibility of these particular families, uh, we we'll want to make sure that they're visible. Otherwise, if we deselect the, them, the parameters won't come with. Uh, if you select the object, though, and you want the visibility settings such that you don't see it in the majority of the views, for example, I could go ahead and deselect it here and have it available only in, for example, fine detail level. That's probably good enough for what we're after. Again, this is just geometry to, as a carrier of uh, the shared parameter. Now, the idea of this exercise is we want the user to be able to manipulate the HU RFA in the project environment and then assign values, decibel levels, to uh, each of those uh, each of those parameters and in order for them to do so we essentially need to map the shared parameter from the subcomponent family to a family parameter in this family we want to make sure it's a family parameter not a shared parameter uh, so let's just show you how it's done here I'll go ahead and click on this uh, parameter here or this uh, subcomponent family and when I do I can then select for example the associate family pa uh, parameter button 63 we're going to add a parameter here and in this case we're going to add a family parameter called 63 Hertz um, unit discharge DB and then click OK and so the idea is that we uh, basically associated that with the family parameter Again, we want to make sure that this is an instance parameter, not a type parameter, so I messed up there. Just go to Modify and change it to Instance. Click OK. And uh, now it's an instance parameter rather than a type parameter. And basically, we need to just repeat this uh, a few times. So do the same thing with the 125. Add a parameter, 125 hertz unit discharge I think I'll copy this this time just to save myself some typing so go ahead and copy that instance and it will be uh, I think everything else is okay uh, go ahead and click OK there click OK there same thing with 250 add a parameter and then put in 250 instance parameter click OK and basically that's done we need to do the same thing for the other 
uh, component. And obviously it's a little different. We go ahead and associate that with a, a family parameter, but it would be unit return db because we want to be, be able to have a different value for each of these. So let me just add another parameter and it's called unit return. And because I clicked on the 63, better have this be 63. I'll copy this, save myself some time. Instance parameter, click OK, add a parameter, 125. Click OK, uh, and I think I forgot to make that into an, uh, an instance, but that's okay. We'll get it here in a moment. 20, 250 unit return instance parameter. Click OK, OK. We can go back to the type dialogs and probably modify that. So make it instance, and OK. So basically, we now have all these shared parameters from the subcomponent object linked to family parameters in the host family. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that that's complete, we can go ahead and save our host family and we'll load it into the project. So let's load it into our example project here and place a couple instances of it. So once I do, I can select that object and then I can edit these values here. So just put in some sample values here just to and again, these probably don't relate to anything in the real world, but we're just going to put something in there so you can see the values take effect. And we'll do the same thing for here. Okay, and so basically we have those values now associated with these AHUs. Now remember, I had created earlier, and this is one thing I overlooked. Right now, let's go back to our family. Because remember I had that uh, fourth parameter called HU. The idea was it was going to tie uh, the subcomponent families to the, uh, uh, the master family. So what I need to do here is I need to create a family parameter here. Let's just do it here in the dialog called AHU. It's a family parameter. It's going to be another instance parameter. And it will be a text parameter. Click OK. And so there it is. Oops, it's not supposed to be a it's supposed to be a text parameter. So let me do that again. AHU and an instance parameter text. And I think we got it that time. Alright, there it is. Click OK. Remember that these guys right here, if we click on them, they have this HU parameter. Again, we want to associate that with the family parameter. And we'll do it for this one as well. And click OK. Now the reason why in the beginning with these subcomponent families we made shared parameters is that again, shared parameters will be scheduled once they're in the project. But if they need these uh, uh, what are family parameters to sort of uh, piggyback on top of in order to get in there. So let's go ahead and save this, load it into the project, load an example project, overwrite the existing version as parameter values. And we now should have an HU parameter here. I'll just call this HU-1. And we'll call this AHU-2. All right, so now we can build the schedule. So go into our project browser, schedules and quantities, new schedule. Go down to mechanical equipment. Click OK. We'll bring in these four fields here. You could bring in more or less. Obviously, we're just uh, doing this for the basics here. And I'm going to click OK to see what we have so far. And you see there, there's the, the values are indeed populating. OK. Now, as I'm looking at this, somehow I do not have any values for 125 and 250. That means I, I must have missed something in the, uh, the HU unit here. So let's just go back here. And yeah, I went ahead and forgot to map 125 and 250 for some reason. I thought I had done that, but apparently I had not. So 125 unit return, map that one, and this will be 250 unit return. Hopefully that takes care of it. Let's look at this guy, make sure that he's all mapped. Okay, and then save it, load it in the, uh, into the project, overwrite the existing version. If we go back to our schedule view here, yeah, everything's filling in. 